In this tutorial, we're going to build the world's most popular color correction grade on TV right in Final Cut Pro 10. On the way, we'll look at correcting video levels for broadcast, ask what the hell is Hyper Gamma, and of course, I'll try and cram in as many tips from my broadcasting editing career as I can. It's been long enough. Hello, welcome to another tutorial on the Industrial Revolution YouTube channel. If you're new here, then please subscribe and maybe hit the bell, and then you'll get notifications when we post a new video. Also, a like always helps and we love to read your comments. Thanks for all the feedback on the recent videos. So let's get on and build what I call the world's most popular colour grade. Some people call it the Saturday night effect and that goes back to the 80s. And it's even more relevant now because you're going to see this as soon as you flick on the TV within a few hours. Very popular in talent shows. Reality shows use it all the time. And once you've seen it, you'll just be able to go, yep, I know exactly how that's done. Right, let's start. We have a clip here of some guys walking across a junction in the road in the rain. You know, quite nice, standard shot, but we're going to give it a bit more oomph or the world's most popular colour grade. Now, as you can see on here, we've got the waveform up and you might have been told a lot of times about not going over 100% white. Now in here, we do have some whites. Um, but they tend to go over 100%. Now, what has happened here? This is just straight from the camera. And it was probably shot on a Sony camera. And there's something called Hypergamma. And Hypergamma actually records whiter than white. It's not a washing powder advert. It actually records 109%. So peak white is 109%. And as you can see in the top left-hand corner there, if I put the cursor on there, nothing goes above 109%. And that's because it's recorded in Hypergamma. Now, there's three ways of recording in a camera. You can record Rec 709, where nothing will go over 100%. And if you're doing turnaround, quick turnaround, that's what you need to do, because it means you don't have to go through and colour correct each clip. Um, you re can record Hypergamma. Hypergamma is really good for doing things like green screen, because you get more um, dynamic range um, in, on the picture. Um, but it's going to do 109% whites, which means you're going to have to colour correct um, the image or the video before it goes out on 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 television because if you were to just output um video like this it's going to fail anything over 100 percent and you're going to fail there's a bit of latitude with broadcasters but not much so this is way over and that would fail and then there's of course s log which you're going to have to put um, an automatic LUT on or whatever but the same thing applies if it's going to go to broadcast you can't go over 100 percent but if you're making productions for the internet you don't have to worry about that and you can go up to 109 percent um, because you've got that leeway now well you might say well if i put a generator on it's only going to go up to 100 percent well you kind of true but let's just actually for the sheer hell of it while we're here drag a custom generator on there let's open up the controls and let's see where this gets us if we say white on here that's why that's 100%. Were you saying, well, the internet's meant to be 109%? Well, yes, it is, because what you can do is you can actually go in and you can colour correct that up to 109% on there. So you can actually do 109% white on the internet. But I tend to correct everything as if it's going to go out on TV anyway, because a lot of stuff I do gets repurposed, a lot of broadcast, and you don't want to have to get a call from somebody and say, you know, can you come round and uh, recolor grade it um, because it's going to go out. So right, so let's give this the punch that it needs and we're going to make it legal for transmission. So the first thing we need to do is go into the color correction tab in Final Cut Pro 10 in the inspector. There's no need to go into the color correction um, in the effects. I saw somebody dragging uh, all the color correctors on from there. You don't need to do that because they're already in there per clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the wheels to start off with. Uh, these are great. And the first thing to do is bring the highlights down to 100%. Very easy. You can bring that down. And you can see there there's the top one at 100%. So now we've got legal whites. And that's legal. That could go and that's fine. But we want a bit more punch on there. Okay. Now what we're going what to do next is crush the blacks. Now, I had a few questions about what does that actually mean? And what that means is it means it's dropping what we think is black on the video here down to zero on 
on on the waveform because cameras will not record down to z unless they're tweaked down to um down to zero a lot of studio cameras um when people rack studio cameras they control them they tend to leave a thumbnail depth between zero and the and the black so they never actually touch this line but because we're in post production and we want to give it a bit of punch we're going to do exactly that so by crushing the blacks we're going to pull down this kind of average level of black here down onto the onto the black so we do the luminance control in the shadows and pull that down as you can see we've got a bit of bite already on the picture there looking a bit better but it's gone a bit dark you know it, i know it's raining but it has gone a bit dark so what i'm going to do is just push the luminance of the midtones back up we've toggled between those two and we can give probably a bit more i think on the black bring that down and then maybe the midtones down just a bit okay that's not too bad at all next thing is quite easy it's just turn the chroma up don't want to go too too mad you don't want people with uh, luminous orange skin but there you go as you can see that instantly gives it a bit more bit more bite on there now for the last thing I'm going to do I'm going to actually add another color correction on here but I'm going to do that with the color board because I quite like using the color board for this so we go back up to the inspector color board but it's going to be with a shape mask and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own vignette there is a vignette down in the um, down in the effects but I actually tend to like to build my own here that's about right you can of course move it around this is the most important thing here I'm going to go outside so we're actually going to go out color correct outside this area so it's everything from here to there we're correcting if it was inside it'd be the other way around and all I do is to get the exposure, the master exposure, and drag it down. Not too much, but just enough to take the edges off. And that kind of replicates shooting on film where you'd actually get less light going to the edges of the frame on there. And now you've got, I can toggle these off and bang, you've got much, 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 much better image on there. Now you might say, well, that's fine, but what you've got here is you've actually generated some illegal blacks. Anything below zero on broadcast TV is going to get rejected. Now it's fine for the internet. You could actually just kick this out straight to YouTube or whatever, and there'd be absolutely no trouble because you haven't got a nice man on the end who's going to look at broadcast levels on his meter and reject it. Now you could actually color correct that back in, but what I'm going to do is I've actually got quite a nifty effect, which is down here in our toolkit. It's just having a big upgrade and it's going to come out very soon. Um, available now, but um, it's gone from 60 to 71 effects. And we have an effect called white and black cruncher. So what that does, it crunches the whites and black. A bit too much on there because that's already doing the blacks and we've done that already. So if I put the crunch blacks back to zero, now you can see it's done a hard clip on the black on there toggle between the two and there we have it probably maybe um on the color board we could actually drop that down a bit more there has been a case of kind of like you know over vignetting and some broadcasts in the uk actually ban have banned vignettes i don't know if that's back but And there you go. Now, if you ask any color grader about what they do the most, they're going to say they crush the blacks and put a vignette and turn the chroma up. And there's so much TV that looks like this now. And once you've seen it, you know how to make it. And that is the most popular color grade you'll see on TV. As I said, some people call it the Saturday night effect. And really the Saturday night effect went one stage further and that actually added a bit of glow. I can find the glow on here. I'm not a huge fan of the um, 
of the glow in Final Cut Pro 10. I don't think it does. Also, it's just blown everything out to 109% again, as you can see, um, which isn't great. It shouldn't really do that, should it? But sometimes you correct the drop in luminance by just adding a bit of glow. Yeah, I'm, do you know what? I might actually write it my own glow plugin for this um, because I don't like that one at all. But sometimes you'll see again on reality shows they pump this up, you know, really quite high. So that's how to give your footage a bit of punch. I call it the world's most popular colour grade. And I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. As I said, please like, subscribe, love the comments down below. And we'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye bye.